What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Rewind, part of the Wayward World podcast. I'm Sid, and I'm gr- it's good to be back because this is the first episode that I've recorded since my trip. Uh, back in the first week of May, I was in California, and uh, we're going to talk about that trip with uh, Annalise here real soon, so I'm very excited to talk about that trip. I'm Sid, and uh, we got a very special buddy of mine, a good friend. Uh, musician, computer science, uh, computer scientist. Is that what they call y'all? <laughs> you know? I'm a s- software developer. Yeah. Soft- yeah software yeah. developer, you know? Okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Car- Carlos uh, Vasquez Bauer. Did I, did I say that right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. You got nice. It. I didn't even write it down. How are you doing, Carlos? <laughs> you know, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Enjoying my long weekend. Yeah. Are, are, do you have Memorial Day? It's, we're recording this the day before Memorial Day, by the way. So are, do you have that off? Yes, yes, and it's going to be so nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I I love healthcare because like um, we get all the major holidays. Well, I guess depending on the clinic, because uh, you know I center and everything, so uh, uh, we're more of a healthcare f- facility rather than like the ER. Mm. The ERs are uh, they're they're twenty four seven. So yeah. <laughs> uh, urgent care too has to be like open um, at a tomorrow i think um but you know the eye center no one no one's no one wants to go to the eye center yeah <laughs> uh, on their day off <laughs> on the on the holidays so like yeah yeah um no i'm looking forward to it i always look forward to it um carlos like um what have you been up to like uh, what, what actually you know what why don't we start with um who you are what you do and how we met yeah so um again my name's carlos i um I'm a software developer for a contracting group called the FDM group. And I currently work with TD bank on their mobile Android team. Um, I went to Gonzaga with Sid and yeah, we, we met, we had a, I think it was a film class that was our first class together. It was the international film course. Matthew Matthew Bolton. Yes. Dr. Bolton, Mm -hmm. the goat. Um, It was a great class. Um, Sid really pulled me back into theater too. We started talking about theater. I grew up doing musical theater my whole life. Um, And Sid talked to me about theater. I got back interested in it. And honestly, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, Yeah, I am back. I work in Santa Fe, New Mexico remotely. It's where I grew up. Mm. Um, And yeah, do lots of music on the side. I, when I was in college, I did uh, concert choir and chamber choir did a lot of singing and so I do a lot of classical and musical theater mm-hmm. singing here in Santa Fe do you remember uh, a new season yes I do yeah um <laughs> not to go into detail about a new season because you know depending on who sees this um <laughs> the, a new season I think but I think I, I I think I did talk about it a little bit actually but um for those who know know what what's what's up with that show but for those who don't you know you don't have to know <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, uh, based on how I'm talking about it. You can tell like how I felt, how I feel about a new season. But we were part of that as well. Um, I I'm surprised that you said that I pulled you back into theater. Like, was it because of like because you were also in? Um, okay, so context like we met at Mo- Dr. Bolton's class, which I want to talk mm-hmm. about here in just a second because that class was amazing. I think it was yeah, oh yeah, one of the, one of the best classes I had at Gonzaga. But um, like when. Uh, I guess when we really started to get to know each other is you were originally going to be CB for Doxy's God. Yes. And then, and then yes. you're like, you just had a lot on your plate. You got, you got cast in both the shows. You got cast in Jaron uh, Fugley's um, friend of the show, his uh, production of Midsummer Night's Dream. He got um, Doxy's God, but you ended up doing Midsummer Night's Dream because like, you know, of all of your commitments and stuff like that. But like, I'm surprised that like, when you said that I was the reason, like, was it because of Doxy's God? No, it was, um, honestly, it was when we took that class with Dr. Bolton and you and I would talk about movies just outside, like when we'd be waiting outside oh, that yeah. theater room, mm-hmm. um, just chatting and you just talk about theater and doing theater. And I was like, gosh, I missed, you had me, um, you told me to go to next to normal that it was happening. I didn't even know that it was happening when they did that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and I took a friend of mine and I was just like, I missed this. Wow. I need to do this again. I'm I'm surprised you've never told me that before. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, it was, it was really big for me. I mean, it was something that I loved that I quit mm-hmm. and or thought I had quit, and I don't know. It was yeah. it was good. How the the tables have turned. Now I've quit theater, and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> now I like I 
probably this uh, like this connection probably wouldn't have happened if uh well your connection like we're going to talk also about the fact that you're in spring awakening and all that stuff mm-hmm. too like there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to talk about but the show is definitely about you but i do want to talk about uh matt dr matthew bolton's uh, oh. film class because like on the show i've talked about my experience at gonzaga and realizing just how much of it was just like um a facade i guess like i don't know like i i think you're like in the moment you're like oh this is really good but like uh when you reflect upon it and then like you graduated college for like yeah now i'm a college graduate for the past three years i'm like maybe all these experiences weren't that great at gonzaga and a lot of these classes weren't that great and all these mm-hmm. theater stuff that i did were not that great <laughs> um but dr bolton's class was the best thing like still even talking about it right now i oh yeah I participate in like, I think that's the most class I've ever participated in, uh, in my life. <laughs> oh, that was such a good class. Mm-hmm. It was, I don't, I had never really gotten into international film before or just film in general. Like I liked watching rom-coms. That was my, that's what I did as an outlet to like relax. And I don't know that class, dude, it just, Oh my gosh. Some of the stuff we watched. I remember watching that one car. Why movie? And just being blown away the um, in the mood for love mm-hmm. and just being blown away and just being like, oh, my gosh, yeah, like, there can be so many layers to so many things. Yeah. And Kurosawa being introduced. To that, oh, yeah. And I mean, of course, seeing all the Star Wars connections later on. Well, specifically mm-hmm. like uh, Seven Samurai, uh, Dave oh, yeah. Loney, the creator of a lot of the recent Star Wars stuff. Um, he really loves Seven Samurai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And when you see that movie and you like, you see all the, the references, specifically the Mandalorian did it, but also you could see it in the clone wars, you see it just everywhere. And it's like, wow, he really loves that specific movie. Um, mm-hmm. I will make an admission and maybe Dr. Bolton's going to listen to this. So I, I'm sorry, Dr. Bolton, but I, uh, I had to like, y- you know, like the playback, I put it at triple speed because I was like, I, I can't sit through a three hour international movie. I have other things. <laughs> other so, pod- yeah. So uh, I mean, some of those were brutal, like Dog Dogville. That's yeah, Dogville. Oh, oh I didn't. I that oh, movie. Did you? It was fascinating. Yeah, we. Did you watch Dogville? Because I watched Dog. You're thinking of. Um, oh, the other film class we. T- <laughs> were you in like the religion class? Yes, I was. That we also had that class together. Okay, Matthew Bolton. Okay, I can't remember. I don't that, remember that, that guy's name. Yeah, he's a friend of my uh, Matt, Matt. Matt. He's also named Matt. Matt. Matt Ridge right doc yeah dr in so um, like i don't know for some of those movies there was that there was um well it, the romanian new wave films oh yeah they were just like the super long slow takes where it's mm-hmm. just like one i don't know oh yeah those were so hard to watch yeah dogville um for uh the bible and film or whatever it was called that was three years yeah. ago <laughs> um I literally said in class, I did not watch this whole movie. I couldn't. I'm sorry. That it was <laughs> brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> but like speaking of brutal too, um, like I was doing really well in that class until Doxy's guy went into like production mode. And then I started dropping the ball on like a lot of things just to focus on my senior project, which, you know, yep. that's, that's funny. They, you know, all this connection and stuff like that. But um, no, like talking about your, like real quick, just talking about, um, your audition and like um i just remember i just remember like how passionate you were about it, like the role and like um like how much it made you feel and i was like this is this was really good this was a really good like audition um i you know uh, carson came in like when you had to like drop out and i'm grateful mm-hmm. for that but like i wish we could have seen you as cb um but i i really wish i could have done it i really wish i could have done it mm-hmm. i just i was we were planning, I was planning that tour trying to fundraise for the mm-hmm. choir when we went to Italy and we took uh, a new season to Italy. Mm-hmm. I was fundraising for that. We had all the music we were doing. It was senior. I was taking four 400 level computer science courses. Like I just didn't. And I was doing research with a math professor. I just, I doing honestly doing midsummer was way over my head too. That was more time mm-hmm. than I should have put into something at the, but yeah and, and it's Shakespeare too so <laughs> it's yeah hard. yeah it was just a slightly smaller role which I was and on on a longer timeline and I was like okay I can do that mm-hmm. yeah it was I a just, short yeah a shorter role but a very big role too bottom oh that's yeah. a that's a hard that's definitely 
that's an that's a character i feel like you could screw up very easily like just to, like you can underestimate it really easy like i feel like mm-hmm. bottom has a lot of layers that um like you can get trapped into being making it like super surface level surface level so you yeah you had a very big role too <laughs> uh, yeah it, it, was, it was that was that was a fun role man mm-hmm. oh my gosh it was i just was having fun the whole time i mean there was like there's a lot of layers that i had to consider mm-hmm. especially for some of his monologues but oh it was just fun like i was just screwing around yeah now be honest did you see dogs is god yes okay yes. i don't uh, remember too much about it because it was three years ago yeah. Um, but I went with one of my old roommates, Jimmy McGinley. Oh, oh, Jimmy. I, I know. I know Jimmy. Um, yeah. he, you know, it's funny <laughs> because um, I want to say like uh, he was a junior when, when I was a freshman or like he was a sophomore when I was a freshman or something like that. But um, what's funny is like we're the same age, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, he um, he had come back to Spokane for like two months and was living on my couch at the time. Yeah, I didn't know Jimmy uh, saw the show. That's that's so cool. Yeah, we went. Yeah, well, what a roller coaster, huh? That show is <laughs> um that that show honestly like besides a lot of the things I've done um in the last 3 years, like that was probably the best thing I ever did. Um it was you could tell how much work you'd put into it in the direction. Yeah. I I did. But yeah, that was um I think like it I put a an unhealthy amount of uh work into it i would say i feel like i would approach it much differently with my attitude now if i were to redo it but um that's fair yeah i'm grateful i had it i think like starting mm-hmm. off with something hard really um um or challenging i should say really shaped my um my palate mm-hmm. to do to do things and to like stretch my wings um but yeah the show isn't the dog sees god show uh, even though we have we honestly haven't talked about that show in a long time uh, uh on this show i think like every once in a while i would talk about it because it was still kind of fresh i guess um this podcast has been going on for two years and dogs is mm-hmm. god oh dogs is god's actually four no way like 2018 no it was 2019 because well, it was well, my senior year well like the show went up in 2019 i was working on that show right fe- february yeah. of 2018 and uh, i worked on it like for a full year um no sleep well sleep but like i think towards the end <laughs> towards the end like there was no sleep like that last yeah. week i was just like oh my god <laughs> what what if the show does not like what if it falls apart and i was like n- actually no i lie um you know well actually no i was actually thinking about like oh my god what if the show falls apart and is in shambles and everything but like at the end of the day i was like this is it <laughs> like this is a show that i would actually see i this is it's done, you know, and that's mm-hmm. such a weird feeling. Um, I do. Yeah. Despite me. What, what was your reaction to me? Like leaving theater, by the way, like just to you leaving theater. Yeah. Like knowing that, like I've, you know, now knowing that I inspired you to go back into theater and um, you seeing dogs, he's God and all that. Like, what was your reaction to that? Um, you know, I always find it kind of, I, I'm always just a little sad when people pull away from their outlets, their artistic outlets, just mm-hmm. because mine has been so present and important in my life. But mm-hmm. um, I mean, I've, I've stepped away. I mean, I didn't do theater for five years until mm-hmm. I did that one act, um, that one act show that Murphy directed. Oh, yeah. um, and, you know, I mean, I think everything you got, you got to have your, your space from things sometimes. And yeah, you know, yeah. And you can relate best for you. Yeah. You can relate to that totally. Yeah. Uh, especially like stepping out, who knows, maybe one day it might happen, but right now we got to focus on this show and we got to focus on you, Carlos. Um, I'm yeah. very excited to talk about the person or thing that you're thankful for. Uh, but I want to remind the wayward artists out there that this is the rewind. It's part of the wayward world podcast where each and every Sunday. I sit with the wayward artists as they talk about someone or something they're thankful for or whatever it is I want to talk about. If you like that, please subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com. Uh, we don't have a URL. <laughs> um, just search, uh, the wayward world podcast on YouTube. We need a hundred subscribers to get there. Um, we're at four, we're almost at four. So we're about a quarter there. Uh, like, well, now three quarters, I guess. I, I don't know how quarters work. I, I math, all that. I'm <laughs> stupid. You know, <laughs> I barely passed um, math in college, like just barely. So just enough so I can like seize it, get degrees. You know, I got to see in yeah. math. So um, 
so if you like that, please go subscribe on YouTube so YouTube can get us a URL. And then uh, subscribe on podcast services everywhere. Anything with the cast at the end, we're there. Um, rest in peace, Facebook podcast. Um, 10 months. Uh, it used to be an outlet that we had. And now Zuckerberg is like, no, uh, Facebook podcasts are so dumb. We're going to get rid of it. No one's going to listen. No one listened to podcasts on Facebook. That was such a dumb thing. Oh. Um, no. They're focusing on clips now, which is like, ugh, whatever, trying to get on TikTok now. Um, so go subscribe on uh, podcast services wherever you get your podcast. And then uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash where we're podcast. We're at the dollar level. You can buy me something off the dollar menu at McDonald's or at the $5 above level. You can help support the show by getting exclusive perks and goodies, including episodes early, newsletters, hangouts, and possibly possibly being a guest on the show. So please subscribe on patreon.com slash where we're podcast. Shout out to Jared Petty of Pockets Full of Soup and the Top 100 Gaming Podcast for being my podcast ad. One podcast, one more time. <laughs> uh, Carlos, I'm going to ask you the question that I ask us each and every week. Tell me about someone or something that you're thankful for today. Yeah, so um, going back to theater and music being really present in my life, um, a really good buddy of mine that I grew up with, uh, his name was Enrique. He, um, We had met when we were in pre-K. We grew up singing and doing music together. He was a great, great drummer. We played in a Zimbabwean marimba band together at the church we grew up in. Mm -hmm. Um, And he really kept me in my music, you know? Um, He's, it was, I'm, honestly, if it probably wouldn't have been for him, I would have left music entirely when I was like in middle school, high school, because it just scared me so much. Mm -hmm. Um, He, uh, it's his birthday on Tuesday. He passed away about a year and a half ago. Oh. Um, in a motorcycle accident, but it's um, his birthday on Tuesday, which I'm, you know, excited for. So yeah, yeah. I well, I I did not know he passed away. Uh, when you uh, w- when we pre showed this, you were like, "Oh, my friend, Vas- uh, uh I'm sorry. What was this? Uh, Enrique. I- Enrique. And it was like, uh, "Yeah, I'm going to talk about my, my friend Enrique." I'm like, "Oh, cool. We're going to talk about a friend." But yeah. Um, yeah, no, actually, no, 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 it's fine. It's, we actually, yeah. no, this is like very relevant because uh, a good friend of ours here on the show, uh, Joseph Sloma, uh, passed away in a motorcycle accident as well. He passed away last year. Um, he was a really good friend. And the last conversation I had with him was on the show, which I have the last recording that of me and him talking that, which is like, it's crazy it's to think about. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, yeah, I want you to expound on the... Um, the part that you said that you were scared. What were you doing? Uh, like, were you doing, you were doing, were you doing music in middle school? And like, what was so, what do you think was so scary about it? I started singing in choir at my church, um, Catholic church. It was, we had a pretty, you know, for as far as kids go, relatively organized choir. Um, when I was five, I think, Mm-hmm. Um, and it was all these kids that we grew, we all moved, grow, grew up together, went to school together from most of us from pre-K until senior year of high school doing music and whatnot. Um, I had a really hard time doing just music and I doing music and theater as a young Latino man. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was hard. It was terrifying. I mean, kids made fun of you. Kids beat you up for doing that. And yeah, I, I got really scared. I wanted to leave it. I used to hide it from people. Um, honestly, until I got to Gonzaga, I used to hide that. I try to hide that. I did so much art. Yeah, I, um, couldn't, I couldn't relate to hiding a part of yourself, you know, <laughs> as a cool it, it, it was just terrifying <laughs> yeah. sometimes. And mm-hmm. I, 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 yeah, I, I picked I, up what you put down. Yeah. I got what you're getting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, um, and a big part of me wanted to quit. I mean, I had family members um, that weren't always happy that, you know, a male, a male family member was, you know, doing quote unquote girly things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to quit. I really badly wanted to quit. And he, he was good at sports. He was, you know, a bro. He was also Latino. Um, but he also didn't shy away from his music um he was and he loved it and he loved sharing it we would be at my house at my mom's house and he'd just start playing piano and just messing around and singing in the corner regardless of who was there he'd just be chilling doing his thing and it was I don't know it 
it took me a really long time to realize how impactful that was in helping keep me in my music and in my doing, keep me doing theater. Um, but yeah, I honestly, I don't think if it weren't for him just like doing his, he didn't consciously say anything or do anything, but just him doing it. Mm -hmm. I probably would have quit. Interesting. That's interesting that, um, you know, being a Latino man and, um, like music being something that was seen as like girly, like I would assume, cause like, I, there's a lot of like Mexican musicians, you know, mariachi yeah. and stuff like that. Like it's, that's so interesting that. Yeah. It was just like the, it's the, you're not doing the cool music. Like you're not yeah. rapping and you're not like, you know, it's you're doing, you're singing classical, you're singing at church. Like what a, what a wuss, whatever. Like you're on stage dressing up and putting makeup on like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? No, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I, like, um, it's interesting that you brought that up because like with Art, um, also a Latino man as well, um, he, the way that he um, incorporates like it, or does his art is like, it's a lot of pride in his like heritage and where he comes from mm -hmm. and like um, identity and race and all that. And um, that inspired me to like really dig into like my Arabic roots a little bit more because like, you know, as somebody who is mixed, I am, my mom's American and my dad is Saudi and I never really felt connected to either of them. So I was just like, Oh, what the hell am I, you know? And I'm a proud Arab American. Like I bet I, and I speak Arabic and I have all this like background and mm -hmm. culture and like it's not just Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is its own thing, but it's uh, like being an Arab. It's like it's Lebanon. It's like it's all these other countries too. Like it's mm -hmm. called the Arab nation. So I feel connected to all Arabs and um, like our struggles and where we come from and stuff like that. But um, you know, he really inspired. Like he didn't even tell me like Sid, you should like be more proud of your Arabic heritage or something like that. Like it was just like from looking at the way he's done it and the way he's made beautiful art like from his culture, um, it just inspired me to like um, do the same <laughs> essentially. So that's really interesting that you had the, you had a similar story. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, really, really impactful for me. And I get the, you know, not being as invested or proud of your heritage. I mean, I'm also mixed. My dad, my dad is white, um, but uh in new mexico it's a really interesting thing it's new mexico but they're hispanics not latinos um and the defining trait for a lot of them is that they can trace their roots back to spain which i mean i can too through mexico but yeah yeah um it's just it's a very distinct difference among the people and so it's like there's a very aggressive type of othering when it comes to that it's really interesting mm -hmm. no yeah absolutely um especially since a lot of like people from mexico were brought in from like from spain you know like mm -hmm. uh, you know <laughs> uh, muslims and arabs they were kind of uh, like colonizers as well <laughs> in, in a sense like they um you know the people um the um the ottoman empire and all that stuff like there yeah that, there's a lot of roots that's why like a lot of um like cultural stuff even like the language like the spanish language like has a lot of arabic in there because of yeah. that because of that so i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i forgive you <laughs> yeah i mean like you know i have settlers uh from both sides you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. oh man um to, uh, but tell me about enrique uh, enrique like how did you guys meet uh we met in pre-k I mean, like, um, what's the story? Like, how, how did you meet? Oh, we just, we were in class together. We were in the same pre-K, pre-kindergarten class when we were four. Oh. Um, and then the next, the next year we started singing. Our parents were both at, both went to the same church, the cathedral here in Santa Fe. Um, and they put us into music. So we were just singing in this children's choir, you know, little shits just, screwing around hoping waiting for their fruit roll-ups during the homily interesting. <laughs> like, that's interesting but yeah but yeah interesting how that works <laughs> week with kids like it's just like oh yeah you, you want to be my friend like sure uh yeah. but like I'm, I'm curious like is there was there like a time where you consciously like oh yeah this is my this is my best friend 
you know well like, it was we had a we had a, like our squad um mm-hmm. there was about all kids that we all went to school together it was like my friend alex my friend nikki my friend enrique um nikki's little brothers liam and jeremy and me and our friend thomas luke and we would just kind of move together during mm-hmm. the summers because we all went to school together we were all the same year except for thomas luke he was two years younger than us um but we had got we had gone to school together from pre-k on and then we started going to we sang together moving forward as well um so we all just got really really close mm-hmm. um because we were always we had to be we were around each other all the time and like so during the summers we would like spend like weeks at a time at each other's houses and where like we just move from one house to the other or we'd like all call our moms and figure out what was for dinner at what house and then we decide what house we were going to for the night yeah um and it was just our squad it, it was and I'm still really close with all of them we um and our families are all still really close but it was yeah it was just um we, it, it, we were a family no, I all the that. all the way through no, I love stuff like that. I used to have a squad too. Um, yeah. I had to leave them because um, of, you know, Saudi Arabia and all that yeah. and who I am and like the type of person that I am. I'm just like, I can't, I can't explain that to them. You know, mm-hmm. like I can't, I, I, I won't get them to change their minds. A lot of them were very religious, you know, yeah. and, and, and that doesn't mean like, you know, you, you, you 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 could be religious and like believe in lgbt stuff and uh atheism well not for me it's more agnostic i'm more agnostic so explaining those two things to uh to people who lived in a country that doesn't re- require critical thinking it's just like i i can't we, like the connection is gone uh so i just yeah push them aside uh unfortunately without any i just like you know it's goodbye and i didn't even talk to them i didn't even like i it, it was i just kind of just dropped them uh when i came to the states i completely like just left my saudi life behind um so i have no connection over there so i i do miss being in but i i do understand being in that group where you like hang out with each other and you, you spend like you sleep over and you do stuff with them and stuff like that even though they wanted to do stuff at like 11 p.m on the weekend and i'm just like no you know, because in Saudi Arabia, things are open late, (laughs) Mm -hmm. especially during Ramadan. It was like, um, things would be open until like 4 p.m. or like before um, the sun uh, rises before fasting. So um, we would hang out in the late nights and stuff like that, waiting to like uh, fast and stuff like that. So um, I do miss having a squad. I kind of had one when I was doing theater stuff, but now it's just like, oh, it's just me now doing uh podcast stuff and occasionally i'll i'll see somebody and like oh yeah let's chat let's hang out let's have coffee but um i do miss being in a big group um do you do you miss your squad like do you hang out like i I know you said you're close but like do you guys hang out do you try some of us yeah um some people moved and so we just not um the access isn't always there and you know we're adults now and so we have jobs and things we got to take care of but and it's grown. Our little group has grown. As we got older, we kind of just kept pulling more and more people in. Nice. Um, it, so I, I try to see, I try to see people. It's it's great. Um, part one of the great things about being back in Santa Fe is being able to be around these people that I've known my whole life and have like we've all watched each other grow mm. and still choose to like hang out with each other, which I think is really cool. Nice. That's great. I love, I love stuff like that. Um, I'm curious, uh, going back to Enrique, um, well, what made you think about him today? Was it because, did you say his, uh, the an- his anniversary of the day he died? It's his birthday. Oh, it's his, birthday. The anniversary is in August, but oh. the, his birthday will be on Tuesday. Yeah. Was that why you were thinking about him today? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I do with this show that with Spring Awakening um, and playing more, it's a lot of what I'm seeing in the character and building in the character and learning with the character is um, a lot of those same things. I mean, he's terrified of himself because of toxic, like, and it, he's terrified of growing because of how toxic masculinity can be. And he's terrified of failure because of that. And he's terrified of letting himself be himself, letting, let, like actually being himself because 
he's terrified that he won't be what he thinks is the ideal man. And it's, I don't know, it's caused me to think a lot about, I mean, just that in myself um, and where, and I'm by no means done with my journey on figuring out like what being, what masculinity means now. I mean, I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly like thinking about it, but a big part of my evolution in accepting myself was him. Yeah, that 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 stuff is really good too. I mean, um, I I can't I don't really remember Springer with King too much, but like I know like the themes around like masculinity mm-hmm. and puberty and um, sexuality, like all that stuff is like in that show. And you know, you talking about like what makes you masculine and like um, having those conversations with yourself, like that's it makes me wish that you were CB even more because <laughs> like I was like because I, I was like I would wonder like how. Uh, people in your life would react to you kissing a man you know have you like like uh, putting Enrique just to to the side for just a little bit because you brought up the the subject of masculinity like were you thinking about that at all like uh, a bit a a little bit um I I was definitely not nearly as far in my journey with myself and figuring out who I am and what but um yeah there there would be there would have been had they found out which they wouldn't have but Mm -hmm. there would would have been some of the some of my family members that would not have been happy interesting with me I mean there were I mean there were I had family members that just did not like the fact that I did theater Mm -hmm. just in general so to do that and to have to kiss a man on stage like that would yeah yeah Gosh, I, I love like I love and hate stuff like that because like the 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 journey of self discovery is always hard because mm-hmm. you're just like oh, what is what does this all mean like what is that like mm-hmm. who am I blah 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 like I just want to figure all this shit out um, but then like w- once the journey's over it's like okay everything is falling into place right now and I love stuff like that and especially like when you have someone like Enrique who allows you to be yourself who allows you to like gives you the space like e- even though he didn't like do like like you said like he didn't like do anything specifically it was like hey carlos um don't like, like don't give up on music keep doing it like just seeing him do that and have like somebody in your life that you know it's representation you know yeah like it's yeah. uh enrique was there like uh, the embodiment of you know masculinity he was there for you in that moment and you you saw yourself in him and you're like oh if enrique can do this like so can i like type of deal and I just love stuff like that. Um, what, what, what do you think, like, what did you learn from Enrique when he was uh, with us? He, when I left for college, um, I tried to get as far away from Santa Fe as I possibly could when I left for college. Um, re- fi- reasonably, financially could. <laughs> um, and Gonzaga presented itself. Um, when I got to college, I really tried to reinvent who I am as an opportunity. I mean, I showed up knowing nobody. I showed up having never visited campus before I showed up on orientation. Um, And I wanted to, you know, make a new version of myself. And so when I, in doing so, I lost contact with, not fully lost contact, but just pulled away from a lot of people that I grew up with. Um. And he was one of them. I mean, just a lot of the people that I grew up with, I kind of pulled away from just so I, cause I felt like I needed to, to try to change. Um, but every time I was back in town and he knew it instant text, Hey, what are you doing? Let's hang out. And it'd be, I won't, ha- I wouldn't have seen him for a year and he'd come over to my mom's house and we'd hang out. We'd play Xbox. We he'd kick my ass in halo. Um, and it, be like we were little kids trying to pull an all-nighter while beating whatever new game just came out Mm -hmm. um was there a a favorite video game among you guys halo for sure halo or gears gears of war oh wow as those were coming out have you played the new halo i haven't gotten the chance no no i haven't played i played halo 5 okay a little bit Mm -hmm. um but not i 
since I left for college, I've played a lot less video games. Really, the only one that I play consistently is League of Legends for fun every once in a while. But yeah. we used to play a lot of Xbox together, and he would just, he was so good at Halo. He would kick my ass every time. It was so annoying. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, we would, it, it was every time. I mean, he, he never took it personally that when I left, I left and, um, I don't know. He was always just welcoming and he would text me every once in a while, reach out, just be like, yo, hope you're doing well. I don't know. Yeah. Help me grow a lot of my habits that I have now and how I interact with my friends. Nice. That, that's, that's what a friend it is, you know, like that's what a, yeah. would you say he's like your best friend? He was one of them. Yeah. He was one of them growing up. Um, he was one of them. I mean, I think that's a really hard question to answer because I think there's different <laughs> I mean, situations. Like there's, there's different tiers of best friends. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, and it's just like dependent. Like there's, I, I talked to uh, one of, one of my really close friends that was in that same group. Um, her name is Bethany. I've talked to her and it's like, we're not really friends. We're just family now. Like, mm-hmm. and yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. We were all family. Exactly. He's like a, a brother. Just yeah. like me and Art, I, I would consider him like a brother. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of people I would say that about, like, maybe I'll, I'll maybe like a kid, I'll say like, oh, you're like a little brother, you know, like, uh, we're, yeah. we're chill. But like, um, there's not a lot of people in my life where I'm like, you're, you're a brother, uh, your family, if, uh, if you die. Um, it's just, like, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. If uh, Art, like passed away he's, he's in california right now he's mm-hmm. he's living it he actually just graduated huh? look at that yeah have you have you met art before i met him once um but as i was still trying to get into back into theater uh, that's yeah he uh i think he left around the time you were like pretty active in the theater mm-hmm. scene but you know he was a, a great artist and a good friend um I say that as if he's not with us but he, he's still here but um <laughs> But uh, tell me about, tell me more about Enrique. Um, like, tell me, like, do you have any cool Enrique stories that you want to share? Oh, he's just, we used to be little assholes to our, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we would, uh, uh, we would just beat the hell out of each other. We just fight. We were all really into WWE. Oh, and nice. so we just like, we'd go into our friend Alex's basement and um, they had this sectional couch. And for some reason they had these two extra mattresses like in the corner. And we drag them over and like put them in between the sectional couch and just start WWE fighting mm-hmm. and just like beating the hell out of each other and just yeah. like jumping on each other. That's that's how you know you got a best friend because like <laughs> I've 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 done that too with a few people. Um, wh- who were your favorite wrestlers? I was a big Triple H fan oh. at the time. Yeah, he was, um, he Triple was H, obviously Rey Mysterio. I thought yeah. it was cool how many like he was just all flipping everywhere. It was dope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. isn't it crazy that his son now wrestles and like he's about our age what yeah dominic you know do you do you remember i don't uh, follow wwe at all i stopped following i think when i was like 15 or something i follow i follow a bunch of accounts that like watch a lot of wrestling so i don't watch wrestling but i know like through the uh, the internet like what's going on and yeah dominic mysterio well dominic that uh, Gutierrez, I think that's his last name, but like that's Dominic awesome. Mysterio, he is wrestling with his dad now. I mean, do you remember uh, the 2005 uh, WWE SummerSlam with Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio uh, for the battle and custody of Dominic <laughs> Mysterio? No, I that I have to look that up. That that was the that was a crazy match. Oh, it's raining. Hold up one sec. Oh, it's raining, guys. I don't know if you nice. can hear that, but like it's it's hard out there. It's raining hard. Nice. I love it. Um, but back then, yeah, I it, of course it was fake, but like what a concept. It's just so hype. Like, yeah. It's just so hype. Like there the random things, like when Kane and Undertaker would fight or wrestle, and it's just like, oh, the brother is against brother against brother. Yeah. But like <laughs> this one involved a child. <laughs> like it was like, yeah, I know. Uh, he, yeah, they were fighting over the custody of like Rey Mysterio's legitimate son. But like he would, uh, Dominic would go to school and like teachers would worry about like his home life because of it. It was just like, 
they that is so crazy that you involve essentially at the time a 10 year old boy yeah. yeah in this like the, the trauma like he he was probably like in so much trauma i like i can't even imagine like what his therapy sessions were like but <laughs> hey he's he loves his dad he they're they're tag yeah. team partners now um but going back uh, to enrique um do you want to talk about um because i'm curious do you want to talk about when he passed away and like what that was like it was tough um as much as you want by the way like don't you yeah it was it was just um i had it was covid it was 2020 Mm -hmm. um i was still looking for jobs i was working part-time at a men's warehouse in spokane while living on my brother's couch Mm -hmm. um because my brother just is wrapping up at gonzaga right now Mm -hmm. um and so I, he had just moved off campus. And when he did, my lease ran up, ran out and I didn't re- have enough money to find my own place. So I was living on his couch. I went, I came home for a couple of days to visit family. Um, Cause I hadn't seen my family since Christmas. And I was like, okay, I'm going to like get a good, get a COVID test when I land. And I, but I want to spend some time with family. Cause I, I felt stuck because it was 2020. There wasn't a lot of hiring happening. Like, it was just and I was living on a couch I mean I was I loved living with my brother but I was living on a couch Uh, um, and so I was here for a couple days and he reached out but I was hanging with my family I was trying to like spend time with my mom and um, so I didn't hang out with him and I fly back I remember driving out of my dad's old house um, and seeing this accident scene um, I didn't see it up close, but I saw it. I, it was in the intersection that I was going right by. Um, and I was like, oh shit. Okay. Went home, went back to my mom's and then flew out the next morning to land and get a call from a girl we went to high school with asking if I saw that Enrique had passed. When I landed, I got that call. Um, and that it was that accident that I driven by. Wow. Um, my uh, a friend of mine had a much closer encounter with it, which is terrifying. But um, yeah, it was. I don't know. I I got that call and I was like, well, okay, I'm going back. Um, called my dad and told him, and he helped me help buy me a plane ticket from my brother and I. Called my brother and uh, I felt so bad for him. He was on his way to um his, to Cannon Beach with some of his friends and. They were in the car and I called him and I didn't know it was on speaker. And I was like, Hey, I got to tell you something. And I told him in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we flew back and uh, I mean, all our friends grew up singing at the church. So we sang his funeral mass. Um, my friend Kate drove out from Texas and stayed with us. Um, yeah. I don't know. After that, I just, I decided that I wanted to try to be more conscious about how I connect with people and make and maintaining those connections and making sure that like the people that I care about, I don't lose, con- I don't unconsciously lose contact with. Um, reached out to a couple of good friends of mine that, I mean, I'd grown, done high school with and um, we're, we were really close then and being like, and I would call them and be like, look, I don't want to lose contact with people anymore. I was like your family and I'm, I'm not going to let you leave my life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I've been trying to be a lot more intentional about how I connect with people now because I mean, yeah. it can end so suddenly. So. Exactly. I mean, like if, COVID's taught us anything is like, uh, nothing is forever, you know? Um, like even this podcast was a way for like me to connect with other people because of like all the isolation, um, that we all had to endure, uh, over the last two years. I mean, there's still people like, you know, Mm -hmm. the people who really need to like self-isolate and stuff like that are still doing that right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so weird. Like, uh, cause my dogs died and they were like my best friends. They were amazing. Eli and Peyton, we always talk about them on the show. Um, and losing them, even like having our moments, like our final moments together and, you know, saying our goodbyes, it's just like, there's, there's still so much that 
I wish we could have done together. And it's just like, it's too late. <laughs> uh, you have, but you have time to like do it with like, you know, the new dogs and stuff like that. Or like, you know, it also makes you think about, um, like you said, connecting with other people that matter in your life and can I, uh, like making sure that, um, they know that they're, they're, they're cared about, you know, um, how are you feeling? Cause it seems like it was, it, it was definitely fairly recent, but as someone who, uh, you know, I, w- I want to say I've moved on from grief, but like, it still creeps in there once in yeah, a while. Yeah. There's days where it sucks. Um, and I was talking to a friend of mine that went to high school with me here and it's wild. We, I mean, we've had, I think six people that we had like knew between he and I, we were talking that we were close with and knew and growing um, that have passed in the last three years that were our age. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's crazy to think about. And it's like, you know, I just turned 25 and uh, I don't know. It's, it's wild. Um, yeah I don't know like there's some days where like I'm with um my buddy I'm at the night before my birthday last week um I was with my friend oh thank you um I was with my we were out um having some drinks I was with my friend Thomas Luke and I was like man I wish Enrique was here and we we'd had a lot of drinks um Mm -hmm. and he was like me too man me too and you know just little there's, there's just moments you know sometimes when you're just like damn but you know no yeah I definitely know um if I was in that kind of like situation I probably would have been bawling my eyes out as someone who uh likes to drink extensively like I I get I like uh to lighten the mood a little bit but like uh I kind of just drink to to like get drunk whenever I go out like I don't I'm not a casual drinker and in fact if my voice sounds hoarse and I look exhausted it's because I'm I'm surviving I'm surviving a hangover right now that's uh it's winning (laughs) but like um yeah I'm still like you know there's that's the the good thing about theater I guess like I'm able to hype it up and all but um like uh, yeah grief is hard dude I it it's so interesting. Like I, the podcast I listened to actually kind of funny right there. Um, you mm-hmm. can't really see it. It's like cut halfway through. We're, we're redesigning the room here in just a bit, like uh, for the summer. Uh, Cause I need to put the air conditioner and my table is blocking where the air conditioner needs to be. So it's, we're going to, we're going to move things around real soon. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, his dog, his wiener dog passed away um, two months ago. And uh, that was, no, that, that was so triggering, man. I like him talking about his dog and like what he was going through. And I was just like, man, nah, I feel like I'm reliving my grief through, uh, through you. I feel like I'm, you know, like your dog died and I know exactly how that feels like, and just to see her, uh, someone that you care about pass away. And in, in the case of Peyton, like he died suddenly too. So we, I kind of got both ends of that. Like yeah. one of them was like, we knew he was going to die. The other one was like, oh, um, it just happened. So, um, grief is just really interesting. Cause like w- when he talked about his dog, it just felt like it, it was the day he died again, <laughs> essentially. Like it's, it was, it brought me back. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you're, you're handling it. Okay. Definitely. Like yeah, yeah. therapist and, yeah. or like, or talking to somebody at least about it, but like, it's, it's definitely Grief is not a fun thing. I don't recommend people doing it if if you, if you can avoid it, which you can't. That's life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Um, if you had to describe Enrique to like uh, a person on the street, how would you how would you describe Enrique? Uh, a goon. Uh- I mean, we just used to, we just used to be so goofy together. We just do such dumb stuff. Uh, he and I, so so dumb. When we'd be in church, uh, you know, we're high school kids, and we were singing and playing three masses a week. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd be like sitting there, and it'd be quiet, and everybody's you know doing the thing, and we would just turn to the whoever was sitting behind us and just like motion down to our butts and just start flexing our individual butt cheeks really fast. Uh, <laughs> so that they're bouncing <laughs> and they look oh, down and they see it they're like what the heck <laughs> oh, man. Oh, stuff like uh, just uh, little things like that or like we used to have a 
we used to have like little Roman Roman candle wars and we'd get like firecrackers like black cats and M80s and just light them and throw them at each other oh, making wow. groups or yeah. airsofting and just like I don't know we, we were goons we just we were destructive goons yeah boys being dumb man like uh, <laughs> uh like throwing fireworks and stuff like that like I don't know that's cool it sounds like yeah yeah the, I'm definitely feeling the love for uh Enrique um we're kind of getting towards the end of the recording here um this is the what I like to call the, the sentimental part of the show like the final question I like to ask people um in this case like again uh t- say as much as you want um uh, like answer how you feel like don't feel like you have to give like a an emotion emotional like um like go go to a dark place or uh, what have you um imagine like well what what would be like one thing you'd want to say to Enrique right now like if you could talk to him thank you thank you yeah yeah thank you and then just hand him a double white and get my ass kicked uh that's a local beer here and just get my ass kicked in halo (laughs) nice uh but yeah Oh, that's amazing yeah it's simple <laughs> yeah. uh, but um thank you for sharing that carlos i yeah, uh, like i i'm i'm glad that you asked to be on the show <laughs> i mean you're on you're on the list like uh for sure but it's just one of those things that i haven't gotten around to yet so i'm glad that you um uh, you felt comfortable enough sharing the uh, enrique story with us yeah yeah um yeah thank you for having me absolutely where would artists this is uh the rewind we are in the lightning round questions of the show it's a series of five questions i like to ask guests each and every week they're fun they're not so quick because we'll talk about them forever carlos are you ready yeah question number one what would be your perfect day perfect day i would love to wake up and get a nice latte and you know sit read a good book um in a plaza somewhere yeah. And then I would go make a good meal with people I love, family, friends, mm-hmm. um, like a big brunch, relaxed in the afternoon, um, play some video games, hang out. And then at night, have some kind of music, sing, dance, screw around. Nice. Um, you said a nice latte. Who makes a nice latte? So there's a couple shops here in Santa Fe, but I specifically remember when I was living with my, um, living in college, I was living right next to the Safeway. My house was right in front of that Safeway. Um, and waking up and like on a weekend when I just wanted to chill, walk down the street and go get a latte from Arctos mm-hmm. and just sit there like in the sun, like because they have those bay doors that would open up and just sit there and sip that latte and just be in bliss. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, are you flavoring your lattes or is it just like, uh, I typically, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh at me. Uh, I typically go with a vanilla latte. I worked in a coffee shop for a summer and I tried every combination of anything that I could to figure out what I liked and just went back to the vanilla latte. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, is that a controversial opinion? Because that's it, what I get all basic. the time. It's just basic. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes you want a basic, you know, sometimes, um, you know, the deluxe cheeseburger is really great sometimes, but you know, sometimes you just want a, a regular cheeseburger with just cheese. Yeah. 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 You know? So like there's something wrong with being basic. <laughs> I, I didn't even know the lot. I, if I, if I had to like, think about like, what would be a basic like coffee drink? I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know. Frappuccino. Like, I, I don't know. Is our Frappuccinos like Frappuccino isn't even coffee. It, yeah, it means it's just a blended latte. Okay. Yeah, so there, yeah. there, there, there is, so there is caffeine in there because I've been told there, there hardly is, and it's just mostly sugar. I mean, it depends on where you get them, but yeah, at least at the coffee shop that I worked at, when I learned the recipe, a frappe was just a blended latte. You just put it an iced latte into a blender, blend it up, make it frothy. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. I maybe it's a Starbucks that just doesn't put caffeine in their frappuccinos. Yeah, maybe um, I don't know. Uh, question number two, what is the song that describes your life right now? Right now. Hmm. Wow. That, that is tough. (laughs) 
There's so your, many songs. Not um, your favorite song. It's just a, a song that describes your life right now. I have been listening to so much Alan Stone recently. Oh, uh, so much Alan Stone. Oh, um, Alan Stone. Uh, he's from Spokane. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Yeah. Why did I forget him? I have an Alan Stone story. Would you oh, like do to you hear really? It? Yes. It yeah. Happened, I'd love to uh, hear it. A couple of weeks ago. So, um, not to sound like a luxurious bitch over here, but I was flying first class. Okay. Like I can afford to, oh. I don't, I don't live like I don't pay rent here. I can. And the, honestly, the pretty affordable, <laughs> like uh, the first class ticket from LA to Spokane, from, from the one way nice. ticket of uh, LA to Spokane, yeah. and Spokane to LA. So I did, <laughs> I got, uh, I was sitting first class and um, I'm minding my own business. And then Alan Stone shows up. And uh, he comes Wait, up. That's to me. so cool. <laughs> yeah, he comes up to me and he's like, uh, "Hey, man, um, you know, I'm sitting right next to you." Which I was like, "Well, wait, hold up, I'm sitting right next to you," and uh, I, I did. I didn't manage to book a ticket next to my wife, like because his wife was there on this trip. Um, okay. And he was like, "Do you mind? It's still in first class. Do you mind switching seats?" I'm like, "You're on stone," and he smiles. <laughs> and I'm like. And he's like, yeah, I am. What's your name? I'm like, I'm Sid. And he shakes my hand. I was like, yeah, dude, absolutely. You can sit next to your wife. Like it would be the asshole thing like to say no. To say no, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but then uh, once we landed, I gave him my card. Like, Alan, I want you on my podcast because I've been wanting to have you for a while. Um, I'm going to clip this out and I'm going to tag him in, in it now. So because <laughs> like I DM'd him and he hasn't responded, but he has my card. I gave him my card. So yeah. We're, we're probably going to get Alan Stone on this show. So be excited for that. I am. Yeah. But yeah. I've listened to a lot of him. So Brown Eyed Lover, the slower okay. version that he nice. released recently. That's, that's the one I've been listening to a lot. Well, um, he, nice. Well, he's going to be very happy, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he won't even watch the clip. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, we'll but, see. Uh, Brown Eyed Lover, you can listen to that song on the playlist on Spotify called um, Wayward Songs for Wayward Artists. Uh, to be honest, as, as a recording, very bad. I haven't up updated it yet, but by the time this comes out, it will be updated. Um, tomorrow's Memorial Day. I'm going to make that a podcast, like getting my shit together today. So uh, that will be on there. And maybe Alan Stone will be on the show. Maybe. He said yes. <laughs> Fingers, crossed. Fingers crossed. He said yes, but we haven't like settled down and done mm -hmm. anything, but he did say yes when I, nice. when, when I asked, so it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, question number, that, that's really funny. Cause that, that story was, that story was so random. You had it yeah. locked and loaded too. Yeah. It was just <laughs> you like, <were> ready. <laughs> well, it was just like, he just showed up. Like I was like, <laughs> what Alan Stone's asking, like talking to me right now. I'm like, he, he wants me to switch seats with his wife. I'm like, that's, I never even imagined this was like the end of the trip. And I saw celebrities <laughs> in LA. Like I, uh, I went to an event called um, no, we're getting sidetracked, but like, I got to say, say the story. Like I went to, a, it's called stand out, which was like an LGBT, um, um, a bunch of LGBT comedians on stage mm -hmm. uh, for a Netflix event that was being recorded. So nope. like Terry Hatcher was there, uh, Chelsea Ray who played, um, I think she played aunt helga and sabrina the teenage witch like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the og tv show she was like standing right next to me like she wasn't sitting down she was like talking to somebody i was like oh my god i i, I watched your show like in my mind i'm like i watched your show when i was a kid but like i don't want to interrupt your conversation mm -hmm. right now and like the other people like i saw adam rippon i think that's how you say his last name the the figure skater olympic figure skater was like in like the same aisle i was like that's, that's awesome that's, That's so, so cool. cool. And then like right in front of me was the uh, the gay guy from Mean Girls. I can't remember his name. I, know, I haven't seen that show, but I was like, someone pointed out to me. I was like, That's the gay guy from uh, Mean Girls. I'm like, what? And yeah. then, you know, uh, the event also had Billy Eichner, uh, Rosie O'Donnell, a uh, bunch of drag queens. I don't know if you watch Drag Race or whatever, but like, you know, Bob the Drag Queen, Trixie Mattel were there. Um, hmm. Who else was there? Eddie Izzard. Uh, Sarah Paulson was a host. Um, uh, Lily Tom Tomlinson, uh, who played um, Magic School Bus, Miss Fritz, Miss Fr Miss Frizzle. What? Yeah, she played Miss Frizzle, but she's like also very, 
established so like cool. actress, but she played Miss yeah. Frizzle. I looked it up later. I was like, oh, that, that's Miss Frizzle. That's crazy. She's a lesbian. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> I, I, I guess I didn't know. A lot of people did. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, like I saw celebrities and like, that was like, that's the one, that was like the one encounter with like Alan Stone where I was just like, he's talking, why is he talking to me? <laughs> why does he up here? Like, what does he want <laughs> with me? That's super cool. And I was like, I will kick myself. I I kicked myself in the ass on the plane that I didn't like uh, give him my card earlier. But that like, I I knew like, as soon as I got off, I I have to find this guy and Mm -hmm. give him my card. So um, thank you, Carlos, for bringing that up. That was a whole- Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Um, (laughs) Question number three. And by the way, if we do get him on the show, you better share that shit. So- Cool. You you, you say like, my friend talked to Alan Stone. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. (laughs) Uh, Question number three, what's your third favorite movie? This one should be easy, maybe. Third favorite movie? Mm-hmm. Huh. The Way, Way Back. What's that about? It's about a really quiet, awkward, like, 13-year-old boy going on. Steve Carell's in it. Um, he plays the mean stepdad. And hmm. he, he and his mom are going to... I want to, I think it's Martha's Vineyard. I don't know. Some beach on the East Coast. Um, and he's like, he does not like the stepdad because the stepdad's a jerk. He tells him he's a three out of 10. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. In like the first five minutes of the movie, that's how it starts. It's terrible. Um, and it's just about him, like, you know, coming into his own and figuring out how to believe in himself. And I don't know. It's, it's really cathartic. Yeah. I love stuff like and that. Beautiful. Yeah. Especially like, Steve Carell is definitely in a lot of like is this a drama like or is like a dramedy like um... yeah it's I mean it's about a goofy like super awkward 13 year old kid like there's a part where he's like trying to flirt with the, his next door neighbor and he's like she asks him a question he's like it's gonna be a hot summer <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, um, it's just so funny like they're so goofy yeah Steve Carell is definitely in a lot of interesting stuff um I, that sounds similar, like at least, um, you know, the the dad. Well, I'm I'm thinking about his the movie where he was like a coach, too, like the fox mm. catcher. Yeah, uh, the fox catcher. what was it? I think it's the fox, fox catcher. Yeah. yeah, or it could be wrong. I, I, I think that's but, what it is. Yeah, but the way way back. That's that's super neat. Um, it's a great movie. <laughs> uh, question number four: What is your favorite ice cream topping? Topping chocolate mm-hmm. chips. Chocolate chips. Are you getting white chocolate chips or just a uh, regular old? Regular chocolate chips. Yeah. Um, do you have like an ice cream that you prefer to eat it with? Uh, if if I'm putting toppings on, I'd go with like um, a good French vanilla or like a strawberry and then put chocolate chips on it. But oh, if good. I have just like no toppings, then cookies and cream. Nice. Well, that's good. Um, I, don't, I, I answer this question. I think I... On my interview, I I was my own guest and someone else hosted. Um, but I think I said rainbow rainbow sprinkles anytime. Um, solid one. That's a solid one. It's a solid one, and because I'm gay, you know. <laughs> um, so that's a good reason for it. Too. <laughs> exactly, you know. It, but but like, I, I I don't get the the rainbow. I still don't get the rainbow sprinkle like slander. I, I, I always feel I still always feel bad. I'm like I want rainbow sprinkles on my ice cream, please. And I'm like. It just feels like I, I I feel like I got made fun of it before, and I, it just stuck with me. And I'm like, mm-hmm. do people think I'm weird <laughs> for getting like a, this specific ice cream topping that adds not? It just adds a nice crunch. It's yeah, cute. I don't know. Um, but anyway, no chocolate chips. Uh, OG answer, great. Especially like yeah, your idea to put it with like strawberry ice cream, that's really good actually. So good, so mm-hmm. good. Question number five, speaking of chocolate, uh, the most important question of the show, left Twix or right Twix? God, I haven't had a Twix since like I was in high school, I think. Uh, right Twix. Why? It's always the first one I grab. <laughs> Are you right-handed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. So right Twix. Nice. Uh, you should listen. There, the, a lot of the answers are really interesting. Um, we've we've done over a hundred videos, so there's a, just a bunch of different answers uh, to that question. So um, yeah, a lot of people do say that too. So, um, Carlos, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Thanks uh, for having me. And Wayward Artists, you can um, 
This has been The Rewind. Uh, catch us on YouTube and podcast services everywhere and please support on Patreon. Uh, Carlos, where can people find you um, if they want to reach out and like get to know you the more or um, and then send us off with the last word? Um, yeah, I, I have Instagram and Facebook. Um, on Facebook, you can put my full name in, which is Carlos Andres Vasquez Bauer. And I am probably the only one that will pop up. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram, it's at C Vasquez Bauer and that's V A Z Q U E Z B A U R, uh, request to follow me and then shoot me a message. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, last word, last word, um, keep up with your, with your stuff. I hope you, I hope you get back to your theater because coming back to mine has been, and my, and keeping up with my singing has been just, I don't know, incredible for me. So yeah. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, definitely. But the, this podcast comes first, I think. Um, yeah. Though, um, it's been it's been nice having to not worry about editing and um, posting stuff. So um, but I'm, I'm glad to like getting my ass kicked right now to like put more stuff out there. So, yeah. Um, no, we'll see. It, it, never say never for anything, you know, like the, I always say like now the pandemic happened. So like uh, we didn't know that was going to happen so any yeah. anything's possible <laughs> yeah but yeah so that's yeah just and just to anybody who's listening you know take your breaks but do the things you love and just unapologetically i mean mm-hmm. i just do it i have fun i don't care if it's great i mean i try to do as as the best that i can but you know just do it have fun enjoy it enjoy the people you're doing it with and yeah absolutely well wayward artists without further ado It's been real.